something a little bit different today. Uh, we've got a Toyota Land Cruiser. Um, the difference is with this one is it's the full size camper and this has been all over the world. So we'll give you a run around it now and uh, get to look at a few different options. Right, Toyota HZJ79, uh, year 2000. Uh, so it came out of Queensland, Australia. Um, a gentleman from Germany called Axel was living out in uh, Australia, coming up to retirement. And he ordered the vehicle from Toyota and then it went straight uh, from the factory, uh, from delivery to a company called Matilda Motorhomes who built a one-off uh, fiberglass uh, box on the back. And then it was created into a, a camper by uh, Matilda Motorhomes. Had to be a name like that, didn't it? Um, so he then drove it around Australia for two years. Uh, then he drove it back up through Asia, um, India, and then it got shipped to uh, South Africa and it spent a couple of years in South Africa, or the southern half of Africa. Um, and then it went on from there to South America, two years in South America. And then it was shipped back from South America to Europe. Um, and by that time, Axel and his missus had been on the road a while um, and it got stored in their barn in Switzerland um, and was being used for basically weekends away and overland shows in Germany and things like that. Um, so I was on a round the world motorcycle trip and uh, busily looking on eBay at what trucks were available and came across it. Uh, so I flew home to England, jumped in my little Ford Fiesta, shot down to Switzerland and bought it. Uh, and that was five, four years ago, four years ago now. Um, but unfortunately, it was built in year 2000, so everything was um, kind of 15 year old technology on it. So I backed it into my little workshop in Sheffield and uh, spent the best part of uh, six months, gutted it all out, stripped it all down and rebuilt it. Um, and built what we've got today. So, and then I've um, just come back from just over a year uh, touring the Americas. We shipped across to Halifax, Nova Scotia from Liverpool and we drove across Canada, up around Alaska, and then all the way down through the US, all down through Central America, and then we turned around and drove all the way back again, basically, because we had nothing else to do. Okay, pretty uh, pretty standard 70 series cabin, really, really good. They're, they're kind of defender built in the respect of um, utility. It's it's metal dashboard, metal and plastic and everything, but everything works. It's all, it's all top, top quality bits and pieces. Um, having said that, some little break now. But um, only differences from a, a standard is we've got the Recaro seats um, with the the pull out uh, retractable um, feet on long journeys really does make them more comfortable. Um, got a little self made cubby box in the middle, and we've got a, a built in document and map case just above the cab there, which is uh, it's amazing. You can put so much crap up there, and it just stops the cabin getting untidy. Um, and apart from that, I got a little uh, single piston ARB compressor built in that I run the uh, I run an airline for tyre and rear airbag inflation, and also it runs my um, ARB uh, Diflux. And then we've got a crawl through door, so we can get from the cab into the rear or the rear into the cab. Um, only time it's coming useful. Really, apart from on an evening, if you want to store a load of stuff in the front, but um, to escape the Alaskan mosquitoes on a morning, so you could actually get up on a morning and set off driving without having to brave the outdoors of uh, the national bird of Alaska surrounding your vehicle. One HZ or HZ1, um, I think it's one HZ actually, the specification of the motor. Um, six cylinder, 4.2, naturally aspirated, so no turbos to worry about, no electronics. Um, if it's getting a spark and it's getting and fuel pumps running, it runs basically. A um, couple of differences is twin battery setup, uh, just for reliability. It's not 24 volt; it's only 12 volt, um, but a bit of extra reliability having a couple of extra bat uh, having an extra battery rather. They are literally cranking batteries. I've got separate um, domestic batteries um, and twin fuel filters. I run a uh, standard Toyota uh, uh, fuel filter with the the prime pump and the moisture trap. But also I've got a secondary filter which is a paper insert filter and I run that as a pre-filter because um, you never know when you're going to suck bad diesel and actually I sucked up some bad diesel up in uh, up in the Yukon actually a little service station and just pulled a load of rust and sludge out of the back of the uh, the tank and um, luckily the pre-filter saved it none went into the motor and all I did was bypass the pre-filter and the, the standard filter was still functioning perfectly all right um, so yeah, twin filters, twin batteries, and apart from that, it's all standard. It has got air-con fitted, 
um, so that's a that's a big bonus okay inside uh, when I bought it it was fitted out with the, the the most ugliest fiberglass furniture and it had like a stupid wardrobe thing built here and everything and it was awful so I gutted it all out and uh, and basically started again so as you can probably tell I'll just step out of the way a little bit went for a little bit of comfort um, because it, it is my home um, I do spend you know living in it for a, a year at a time um, so a bit of uh, IKEA worktops good old IKEA um, 15 mil furniture ply worth spending the bit of extra on because it, it doesn't warp like normal plywood does um, Dometic two ring cooker and uh, and sink jobby and then underneath I built in um, I had a standard fridge before it, it was awful constantly kicking in every time you open the door um, so I built in underneath I built in a slider for the uh, snowmaster fridge uh, which I'm sure Rich will show you a bit later um, the rear it's all storage across the back under the seating area it does convert into a four seater dining area um, with a table that goes in the middle which is stored here out of the way um, but I, like, I quite like leaving it set up as like a big comfortable sofa when I'm just travelling on my own or actually if me and girlfriend are travelling together. Um, used to have a big back window in there which I hated so I've deleted that, sealed it all up and, uh, and put a solid wall on the back. Um, storage wise we've got some standard kitchen drawers which I've kind of built myself using IKEA sliders again. Built all the furniture on the front. And I've actually got a television, which a lot of people say, oh, why do you need a television? Because when you're stuck inside and it's cold and freezing outside and raining for days on end, you might want to watch a DVD every now and then. A um, little bit of top storage actually came with the vehicle because that's all moulded in um, fibreglass and it comes in really handy for just chucking all those bits and pieces up there that you don't know what to do with. And to be honest, the stuff that goes in them is the stuff we hardly ever use. It's the stuff that you take with you. Um, and you just want somewhere to put it out of the way because you're not going to use it for weeks on end. Um, got uh, it's a, it's a fiberglass floor, and there's no insulation in the floor at all. So I've actually used the rubberized garage floor matting, and it provides a little bit of insulation on the floor and a bit of sound deadening. It's uh, it's working quite well. Um, toilet, toilet and shower room. Um, oops, wrong switch. Just a Dometic uh, electric flush toilet, but it's actually quite a nice little shower room as well. And uh, it's really, really nice to be able to have a, a rinse off when you're on the road. Um, that's working quite well. Unfortunately, it's got lots of little holes in it where there were the previous owners had lots of hooks and towel rails and everything hanging up. But, uh, and then above the cab, we've got um, a bed, but it's, it's, it's not a double bed, it's not a single bed, it's, it's a bit in between really. But you can actually sleep two people up there quite comfortably. A um, lot bigger than it looks when you're actually up there. Um, but obviously the back converts into a bed as well. Uh, again, the crawl through, uh, which is blockable and I just use it for storing stuff out of the way there. But uh, comes in handy if you just want to chuck some storage in there or if you've got something stored in the front, you want to lean through and get it. Electrics were, when I bought the vehicle, it was the, the electrics had been created and added to for a period of 15 years. And I basically had like a bird's nest of old wiring it was absolutely awful so first job was to gut out all the old wiring um, tracing it ripping it out but in actual fact that did me a favor because that led me to completely strip out the insides and rebuild everything so on my my rebuild I've just done the second second rebuild um, I decided I wanted access to all my electrics and I wanted to be able to find them so um, bought myself a little hatch door from a horse box suppliers and built in the actually built onto the back wall of my in internal drawers um, so I'm running a at the moment I've got a 185 watt solar panel um, bought it cheap off eBay that's the only reason I've got that I wanted somewhere around 200 watts and I've got two uh, 110 amp hour leisure batteries actually built into a stainless steel box that's dropped through the floor inside so it's actually centrally mounted between the front between the front and rear axle um, drop through the floor of the camper to keep that weight down low um, bring all my wiring into this cupboard, solar comes in, batteries come in via a split charge and, uh, and then I dis distribute my electrics from this point of cupboard. Um, got an inverter, I very rarely use it, uh, to be honest it, it gets used for charging my, uh, my laptop if I need to when I've been wild camping for a while. Um, and everything else is just 
12 volt LEDs, the toilet, and your basic uh, everything's running USBs or 12 volt. So, apart from the microwave, which I can use on a campsite. <laughs> Right, uh, all the other things I've done recently, this year due to Covid lockdown and everything, although no, it's, sorry, it's 2017. It's, it's 2017 happened. so we can be together. It hasn't happened yet. Um, I've fitted uh, new shock absorbers all, all around. The, the shock absorbers that were on were standard Toyota shock absorbers. But the, the truck, I mean they'll carry five tonne these things, it's got the, the mining spec suspension from Australia. Um, but she sits at about 3,000 kilos constantly. So the shock absorbers work hard. And I found that, particularly after Mexico and Guatemala, the roads out there, it just beat the hell out of the shocks. So when I came back, I've been doing a bit of research on shocks, and I found that Tough Dog had a really good reputation, so I ordered four of them from Oz. And they're actually um, nine-stage adjustable. So I've got the rear set on level seven, and the front set on level three. And that actually makes the vehicle ride amazing compared to standard non-adjustable shock absorbers. So they're a, they're a big ball, they're, I think the 45 millimeter um, bit off 54 millimeter, whatever. They're a big one anyway. Foam cell pro adjustable shocks, and they've made a massive difference to the vehicle. So I fitted them myself recently. Uh, did it on the driveway, and while I was under there, I bought um, some airbag man uh, airbags from Australia as well. And that's a, a company in Oz that build um, Land Cruiser specific airbags, um, and they've made a world of difference. So they're actually augmenting the rear leaf springs at the moment um, so I'm running then you can run them up to um, 100 psi per bag and I'm running them at 70 psi per side um, and that's actually working real well that's, that's again stabilizing the vehicle um, for high speed but also it stabilizes it off-road a bit as well you're not, you're not getting the the wallow because it's, it's, it stands at 2.8 meters high so although I've kept the weight low you still get a bit of wallow off-road so it's the airbags are improving Next jobs, um, I'm probably going to replace the leaf springs and the coil springs on the front. So she leaves on the back, coils on the front, um, and I'm probably going to replace those because they're just getting a bit tired. And I, I think I'll, uh, I'll benefit from a replacement when I can afford it. So, um, apart from that, on the rear, as I said, I deleted the rear window, um, fitted the checker plate so I can actually mount things on the rear of the vehicle now. So actually taking a leaf out of a couple of guys in uh, bug out vehicles that I've met and that. Um, I'm going to get one of the uh, propane heaters, mount it in a metal box on the back and then I can run hot water from that and it will be mounted in a box, probably where the jerry can's mounted at the moment and I'll move the can over to the other side because that side is easy access to my gas and my water supply at that side. So I can run an internal shower in the shower room and I can also run an external shower from the propane instant hot water heater. Um, apart from that, I think I'm almost there but then again we always say that don't we? Right, a couple of little things around this side. This, this, this is basically my, the utility side of my vehicle. Everything, uh, service points, electric, gas, everything comes to this side. So I've got um, a 65 litre water tank slung under the rear of the vehicle, which is where the spare wheel used to house. So I took the spare wheel off, hung it on the back um, and mounted a, a purpose-built water tank under there. That's filled up through the water refiller there. Um, electric hook up. Um, end of day, you know, a lot of people say, oh, campsites, electric hook up and that. It's my house for a year at a time, so if I'm on a campsite, I want electric. Um, a couple of lockers off eBay, cheapos, um, keep my electric cable, funnels, water pipes, crap like that in that one. Um, and I was fortunate that when I bought the vehicle, Axel, the original owner, um, had had a fixed gas bottle fitted propane, so, or LPG. So it's a fixed bottle, um, fill it up with, I've got a, various adapters for all the different countries. Um, when I use in South America and things like that um, and it actually fills up you screw them into that point there and you just fill up from an LPG station um, or gas bottle filling station and actually while I'm on this side a couple of little air valves there is where I actually uh, individually fill my airbags so if I'm parked on unlevel ground um, I can actually drop air out of one side airbag um, literally just tyre pressure valves um, I've got a, an extendable hose that I've got my ARB compressor behind the driver's seat um, so I can drop the air out of one airbag and it actually alters the vehicle level by about an inch and a half just to level up um, and then I can just pressurise them so I'm running them at about 70 psi at the moment um, we've done electrics and then uh, set for toilet waste um, yeah, it's but you don't want to see that anyway after this weekend 
Okay, just moving on from the front. Um, actually, vehicle was equipped with uh, the, the twin fuel tanks factory fitted. So I'm quite lucky in the fact that I've actually got um, the standard fuel tank filler um, is just on this side of the vehicle. And then that fuel tank is actually centrally mounted under the cab uh, for weight distribution. And then I've got the reserve fuel tank in the rear and uh, the rear filler cap here. So they actually two independent fuel tanks that I can switch using a that I can switch using a switch on the dashboard basically. Um, two 90 litre tanks, so I'll get 180 litres and I've actually done just over a thousand kilometres on that 180 litres. I've no idea what MPG I get because um, it would probably just upset me if I thought about it. Um, but I just, like I say, I, I tend to run the front tank uh, just to keep the weight central. But if I, if I get cheap fuel or I'm going on a long run, both tanks and I'll get over 600 miles on, uh, on two tanks. Right, so if you've enjoyed that, uh, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment if you've got something constructive to say. Um, subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And if there's a vehicle that you haven't seen me cover yet, why don't you give us a comment down below, let us know. Um, tag some people if they've got a vehicle that you think uh, they should do a run through on and uh, show everybody around it and what they can do with it. So, catch you on the next one.